Aloha, everyone. I have a question for you today. What's on your never again list? What's on your never again list? So what am I talking about? Well, hi, I'm Brian Ashpole, pastor at Honolulu Assembly of God here in beautiful Honolulu near world famous Diamond Head. It's Wednesday, January 11th, and I'm excited, friend. I'm excited because we're looking at incredible scripture passages all this month of January that have potential to be life changing. That's right, friend. That is right. If you apply these powerful truths, you're like, they can change your life. And today's powerful, life-changing truth comes from Philippians chapter 3 and 4. Philippians, New Testament, Paul's book, Paul's letter to the church of Philippi, Philippians chapter 3 and chapter 4, a few verses from those chapters. Well, let's think about that question. What's on your never again list? What's on your never again list? And what in the world am I talking about? Well, it's the second Wednesday of 2023, brand new year. It's a good opportunity to evaluate where we are spiritually. Where are we? Where do we need to go? And a good scripture passage for 2023 is found in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. Not that I've already obtained all this, Paul writes, to the church of Philippi, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, sisters, I'll add, do, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Wow, that's so uh, important. I want to share some truths that are valuable for 2023, really any year, any time of the year. See, it's a, it's a matter of being disciplined, not haphazard, not, you know, stumbling cause something by accident or hit and miss, but it requires a lot of focus, great focus, great intention, great discipline, friends. Don't be held back by lack, by fear, by doubt, by condemnation in 2023. In fact, let this year, may this year be the year of the Lord's favor for you. Declare that you're going to walk in blessing, you're going to walk in anointing, you're going to walk in the empowering, and you're going to walk in obedience to what the Lord wants for you. And I want to share some good choices for every Christian for every day. And it's, uh, it's our, my never again list. It's not original with me. I heard it years ago. Uh, it's originally from a guy by the name of John Gossett. Four truths and really powerful if you'll put these into practice in your life every day. Number one, number one, never again will I confess lack. Never again will I confess lack. And I'm talking about lack of resources. Philippians 4.19, Paul writes to the church of Philippi, My God shall supply all your needs. He's going to meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Now, it's easy to feel like we don't have enough. We've all felt that one time or another, you know, the need for more. But friends, as Americans, we're the rich of the world. You may not feel like it. You may not think, wow, I don't have enough money. And you, you might probably want to live in Luxembourg, where the median income is $26,000 plus per year. Uh, now, $26,000 is the, the median income, which means half of the people have uh, income ab above that, and half the people have income below. You know, people have a lot of income, so they're number one on the list. Or United Arab Emirates, $24,000 dollars plus a year and we know that uh, there must be a lot of people below because there's some really rich people in Luxembourg and, and the United Arab Emirates and uh, number three on the list is Norway 22.6 thousand uh, by the way that's the, like I said those are the top three in the world the United States is number five with uh, 19 thousand uh, dollar median income well if you don't earn the income of the top three at least thankfully you don't live in the bottom three Burundi $475. Madagascar, $398. And last and least is the Democratic Republic of Congo, $395 per year. Not per month, friends, per year. Now, I've had the privilege of going on a few missions trips overseas to, uh, for example, uh, years ago, many years ago, a small island in the Pacific uh, near Guam, and uh, I remember talking to a guy, they had corrugated tin roofs. I thought, well, hey, maybe it's uh, something for the tropics here, the South, uh, South Pacific, uh, maybe it's because of the hurricanes or, or heavy rains. He said, I said, why do you have tin roofs? He said, don't have enough money. I was, uh, went on a mission trip to Mexico. Uh, it didn't happen while I was there, but uh, someone who had gone on that mission trip before me 
had come to a village and found out that no children were left in that small village. Not one child was left. They had all died. And they could have been spared if they would have had penicillin in that, that village. That's, that's heartbreaking, friend. No matter what your economic situation, we all have a lot compared to many, if not most, nations. But more importantly, friends, more importantly, your Heavenly Father is your provider. Jehovah Jireh, your provider. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the psalmist tells us. Psalm 50, verse 10. All he has to do is sell a few, it's been said. He's your provider, not the government, not the employer, not, not your employer, not whoever writes out your check. The Lord is your, your provider, your Jehovah Jireh. David said in Psalm 37, verse 25, he said, I've been young and now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. And Jesus promises us that if we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, that he's going to provide for us. He's going to take care of our needs. That's Matthew chapter 6. So don't fret, don't fuss, don't grumble, don't be anxious. You know, that's just a victory for Satan. Friends, Jesus will take care of you. Uh, all you have to do is ask him. Do what you can and ask him for what you can't do. Ask with faith, ask with thanksgiving. Now, be sure you have the right perspective, friends. Let me give you a caution on that. Philippians 4.19, I can, uh, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's not about a prosperity gospel. It's not about me giving to get the Lord some giant jackpot that's going to give me everything I need. You know, uh, prayer is not an opportunity to persuade God to give me what I think I need, you know, because that's all about self. I don't need a million dollars. You know, I might want a million dollar home. Now, here in Hawaii, uh, it's a lot more expensive, so it's probably going to be a three, four, five million dollar home. That's a pretty nice place. But, uh, you know, I might want a million dollars, but do I need it? It's not about fulfilling my needs, but my wants. What is it about? It's about getting into alignment with what Jesus has already promised me, what he's always promised you, friends. You're receiving from him what he desires to give to you and what he desires to give through you. That's really important. He will provide you with what you need to accomplish his purpose. And he is faithful, friends. He is pretty faithful. He's going to provide for you what you need. It's not about you, but it's about his will. It's about what he desires to do. So number one, don't confess lack. Number two, never again will I confess fear and defeat. Never again will I confess fear and defeat. Philippians 4.13, I can do everything. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Now, this is really important. Here's where many pe Christians, people, Christians specifically, get in trouble. Because they do not realize the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18.21 warns us that the tongue has power of life. Your tongue has power power of life and death those who love it will eat its fruit your tongue your words have power now i want to emphasize this is not mind over matter it's not about positive confessions it's all again about a right attitude it's all about what the bible declares watch your tongue watch what you say don't walk in defeat don't talk yourself out of a victory declare the victory and live in the victory see many christians live on a subpar level they live on a level less than what God has for them because of what they speak and act upon. They're talking negative. They're, they're living negative. Their talk is a fear. Their talk is a defeat. It's like on the Jericho march, you know, when the nation of Israel came to Jericho, the Lord commanded them to march around it for seven days. And what did he command during that time? Silence. And why did he do that? Because it would have been very easy for the children of Israel, the nation of Israel, to talk themselves right out of victory. Oh, wow, these walls of Jericho are too tall. Man, we're never going to get in there. This is humility walking around there. You know, they defeated before they even start. I want to challenge you, friends. Stand on the promises. Live the promises. 2 Timothy 1, 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Romans 8, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors. 2 Corinthians 2.14, God always, always, not just sometimes, God always leads us in triumphal procession through our Lord Jesus Christ. And 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If you know Christ is your Savior, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So align with your scriptures, don't with the scripture, what the word says, don't confess fear and defeat. Number three, never again will I confess doubt and lack of faith. Number three, nev never again will I confess doubt and lack of faith. Friends, let me encourage you. Let me challenge you. You have the right measure of faith. 
often we hear negative things, we speak negative things, well, I don't have any faith, I don't have a whole lot of faith. Well, I certainly don't have as much as so-and-so. Romans 12, 3 says, God has given each of us a measure of faith. And your measure of faith is just the right amount for you. Did you hear that? Your measure of faith is just the right amount for you to begin with. But your faith, that measure can and should grow. Your faith can and should grow. Remember the father of the boy with the evil spirit in Mark chapter 9? He said, Lord, if you can help us, please do what you can. Jesus said, if, if I can, all things are possible to the one who believes. And verse 24, Mike, Mark 9, 24, the father said, Lord, I believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. What a powerful prayer. I love it. May the Lord transform your lack of faith, my lack of faith, into great faith. See, the good news is we can grow our faith. We should grow our faith. So how does faith grow? How can you grow your faith? Well, we do it through prayer, like the uh, father of that boy did. Also through exercise. See, you know, it's the new year. Many resolutions are about exercise. They want to get a better shape, better health through nutrition and exercise. Same thing is true spiritually. When you use your faith, when you put it to work, friends, you're exercising faith. You're stretching it. Now, you know, it doesn't grow overnight. You have to work on it. But it, your faith will grow. You see it in the life of David in the Old Testament. It's beautiful. He is able to meet a lion when he's a little shepherd boy and a bear. That gives him faith to meet Goliath on the field of battle where no one else in his nation is ready to face Goliath. That gives him faith to trust the Lord when he's fleeing for his life from King Saul in the wilderness. And then that gives him faith even a greater measure to be able to reign as king of Israel and bring it, bring Israel to its greatest uh, potential. Uh, he was the greatest king ever. Why? Because he learned to trust the Lord. He grew through the exercise of faith. And that's what should happen in your and my life. You know, experience in your life are to be stepping stones of faith. That, that helps you grow in your trust in the Lord. Each trial, each obstacle, each adversity gives you strength, gives you courage to trust God. When it comes to the future, you're able to move ahead. Emuva, he moves straight ahead for Jesus. So don't confess doubt, lack of faith. Instead, step out in faith. That's number three. Number four, last one. Never again will I confess condemnation. Oh, here's a big one, friends. Never again will I confess condemnation. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Wow, that's powerful. Let your life be a condemnation-free zone. No condemnation zone. You know, it's sad for me to hear so many Christians live in guilt, live in discouragement, live in failure. It's tragic and it's unnecessary. As a pastor over the years, I've counseled people who slipped away from God in the past. They repented over something that was, you know, really uh, ruining their life, really. They asked forgiveness. But that past experience was still hanging over their head. They asked forgiveness, but they didn't let it go. They were living in defeat and condemnation and failure. And friends, what happens when you ask Jesus to forgive your, of your sin? What happens when you ask Jesus to forgive your sin? 1 John 1, 9, if he could confess our sin, he is faithful and just to cleanse us of some of our sin. Most of our sin. 90, 95, 98, 99, high 90s percent of our sin. No. He is faithful and just to, for, to cleanse us, to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, friends. All unrighteousness. You know, God's not going to say to you, oops, I'm sorry, I can't, please, can't cleanse uh, all of your sin. Some of it's too hard for me. This is really embarrassing. Is that going to happen? No, never going to happen. He not only cleanses all your sin, he throws your sin into the sea of forgetfulness, friend. And he puts up a sign, he's been saying, he puts up a sign that said, no fishing. Jesus cleanses you. He also releases you from that guilt and condemnation. So let it go. Don't live in that. Who wants you to live in that? Satan. Satan is the one who brings you condemnation. He's the accuser of the brothers. He's the accusers of the sisters. He loves to heap it on you, friends. He's going to pile it on, on you until you're buried underneath it. He will weigh you down until you can't walk anymore. He wants to squash you like a bug. But, but friends, Jesus Christ has set you free. He has set you free. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, 1. You are no longer under the burden of condemnation. You're no longer under that burden of blame and guilt and failure. You're not a second-class Christian. You're a first-class Christian. There are no second-class Christians in the body of Christ. You can, can you raise your hands, friends? Can you shout, I'm free, I'm free. Give the Lord all the praise.
Isn't that beautiful, friend? That is powerful. That can change your life. What's on your never again list, friends? What's on your never again list? Are you refusing to confess lack of resources? Are you refusing to walk in fear and defeat? To live in fear and defeat? Are you willing to lay all your doubt and lack of faith before the Lord? Lay it down at His feet. Are you willing to let go of condemnation that you hear from others or even tell yourself? Now there's a good prayer for this new year of 2023. It's not original with me. I received it some years ago from a former superintendent, George Nagato. And it's called the Knots Prayer. The Knots Prayer. Dear God, please untie the knots that are in my mind, my heart, and my life. Remove the have-nots, the can-nots, and the do-nots that I have in my mind. Erase the will-nots, the may-nots, and the might-nots that may find a home in my heart. Release me from the could-nots, the would-nots, and the should-nots that obstruct my life. And most of all, dear God, I ask that you remove from my mind, my heart, and my life all of the am-nots that I have allowed to hold me back, especially the thought that I am not good enough. Amen. Wow, what a wonderful, powerful prayer for this new year of 2023 and all through this year. Friends, there are no second-class Christians. There are only first-class Christians, sons and daughters of the Lord. It's not about positive confession. It's rather using the authority, the resources that Jesus Christ has made available to you. Friends, all of this is possible because of what Jesus has accomplished for us on the cross of Calvary. It's nothing we can do, but he has done it for us already. He declared, it is finished. It was paid for. It's done. Isn't that beautiful, friends? That can change your life. Now, what about you? Is Jesus Christ in charge of your life? Is he your Savior and Lord? Is he your Redeemer? Have you surrendered your life completely to him? I want to challenge you, friends. Repent of your sin. Declare Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord. Put all your trust in him. That's the place that we get. Do it today, friends. Do it today. Don't wait till tomorrow or next week or next month. Do it today and have this new life. Get rid of the old stuff, the never again stuff from before. Maybe you've done that. Maybe you have a response to what I've shared with you today. Please leave me a comment. I really want to hear from you. Friends, please let me know how you're doing. Wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever, you, wherever you're watching, please leave me a message. Maybe it's at our website, Honolulu, HonoluluAG.org. Beautiful uh, beach theme going on right now. Or more likely, it's uh, our Facebook page. As I say each week, that's probably where most of you are. Uh, a number of you people are checking out this uh, Wednesday, these Wednesday Bible studies. Uh, uh, each week, uh, some weeks much more than others, but if that's you, thank you so much. Mahalo uh, Nui If you haven't been there yet, just go to Facebook and search for Honolulu AG. Or maybe you're not on social media, and that's okay. Our, our YouTube channel will be a lot more convenient for you. YouTube, very easy to find. Just search for Honolulu Assembly of God, and if you have a smart TV, you can watch it, this on the big screen. And friends, when you get there, Facebook or YouTube, would you give us a like or subscribe? whichever is appropriate, and please, please share our website or Facebook or YouTube resource with others so they can be encouraged too. If you've been blessed today, you've been encouraged, you've been inspired, would you share that with someone else? Pass it along to someone so they can be encouraged and inspired also. We're going to pray in just a moment, but let me share one more thing that I'm excited about. As I am every week, as I say every week, and that's this Sunday, January 15th, we're going to continue our new series, Welcome to the House, with the glorious truth that we're called to be a house of salvation. We're called to be a house of salvation. Our message to the world, to everyone is this. You can be redeemed. You can have hope for today. And you can have joy for all eternity. We must share the incredible good news of salvation, friends, with everyone we meet. Please invite someone to join you this Sunday at 1035 a.m., either in the building, as I mentioned, in the Kaimuki area of Honolulu, near world-famous Diamond Head and just east of world-famous Waikiki Beach. Or please join us online for the live broadcast on either Facebook or our YouTube channel. We live stream every Sunday at 10.35 a.m. to both locations. Are you ready to pray, friends? Are you ready to do it? Let's go to the Lord now. At this time, let's, let's do it. Lord, I lay all my lack, my words of lack, that I don't have enough to accomplish what you want me to do. I, I, I lay 
all my fear and doubt, words of defeat, Lord. I lay the, the discouragements. I lay the words of condemnation, the words of lack of faith that I speak or that others say, Lord, the, the words of condemnation that others say about me or I say about myself. I lay that at your feet, Lord, and ask that you to set me free from them, Lord. Set me free. I want to live in freedom from all that, Lord. I want to rise up in faith. I want to live in victory. I want to live in the blessing that you want me to experience this year and to accomplish what you want me to accomplish, Lord. Not for my own selfish purpose, but for your glory, your, your uh, kingdom, Lord. I just uh, want to lay that at your feet and offer that to you, Lord. Everything I am, Lord, I, I lay down everything I am and everything I have to you. And may you be exalted and lifted up through everything I say and do. And Lord, I pray that not only for myself, but I pray it for everyone watching, Lord, for every man, every woman, every young person, every boy and girl. May they look to you and be saved. May they repent of their sin and, and choose you, declare you as their Lord and Savior, and lives be transformed by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, they, that, that life of negativity and defeat and, and uh, junk and all that stuff, Lord, be let go and fall to the wayside, Lord, as we rise up in faith and trust you. And glorify you, I pray, with everything we, we say and do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Friends, God bless you. Jesus loves you. Aloha and aloha kekua. God loves you. And uh, God, God is love. Well, there's more life changing truth coming up right here, right where you're watching. So I look forward to being with you again next time, friends. Until then, God bless. Aloha. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.